New York City public advocate Jamani Williams. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. Of course, anytime. So this week, state Democratic Chair Jay Jacobs said that he did not want a primary in the race for governor next year, challenging Governor Kathy Hochul for the ticket. You were considering a run yourself. Tell me what's going through your mind. What's going to be the final decider, whether you run or you don't run? You know, I believe that we've given a pretty good indication by even opening the exploratory committee. Uh, we did the same uh, in 2018 when we ran for lieutenant governor and, and we ultimately ran. Um, but I, I believe it does make sense to open up an exploratory committee, share the vision that we have, and, and make sure that our people are receptive to it. And so far, they really are, and we're very excited about moving forward. So you've been going to different parts of the state in the past year or so. Governor Kathy Hochul has an advantage in that as lieutenant governor, she really had to travel the whole state for that job. So for people watching the show that just don't know who you are and what you're about, give me an elevator pitch. Why should you be the next governor of New York? You know, really, I, I believe people understand the dire situation that we're in. And quite frankly, most people will tell you they're not better off than they were just a few years ago. Uh, and there's a reason for that. And as we try to recover and renew New York State, we really can't do it with the same infrastructure that was there before that helped us get here, that helped us become the uh, the epicenter of the epicenter, that helped us get to all the problems that we are now. And so we can't just be start reshuffling again and uh, a little off the elevator pitch. But one of the things that we said when we jumped in was that just removing someone like Andrew Cuomo doesn't change the infrastructure of Albany. And as you mentioned, you know, right after we said that, we saw the chair of the Democratic Party do what he always does and, and really try to push off a primary vote before we even had a chance to make our decision, which is uh, the procedures of old. And we said before that the procedures of old can't work. And instead of focusing on a election coming up in November, which is a general election where there's a Democratic nominee in Buffalo going against a Republican-backed opponent, uh, where they neither Jay Jacobs actually or the governor would endorse, they're focusing on a primary in 2022 where he should actually be impartial. So tell me why not Kathy Hochul? I think she's relatively new to a statewide audience. She said that she's tried to distance herself from former Governor Andrew Cuomo, who she was his LG. So tell me why not Kathy Hochul to be the next elected governor of New York? You know, at the moment, we're trying to present the vision that we have and we're trying to run for something not necessarily against anyone. Uh, so we're going to try to stay focused in how we think the, the state should be run. I will say that most of what I'm thinking uh, hasn't really changed since 2018. It's evolved, of course, because of the changes that have occurred. But when I ran in 2018, we said that Albany wasn't working then, and most people agreed. And we ran and said, well, what if we have a lieutenant governor that will have the courage to stand up vocally when something is wrong? Uh, and I actually believe if we had a lieutenant governor that did that for the past few years, we might not have gotten as bad as we did. Um, and it's not to say, again, there's any one person, but the lack of someone really standing up when someone's trying to cut Medicaid, when one, someone is having ethical violations, much less the travesty that actually occurred uh, that, you know, brought the, the governor Cuomo down, we might not have been in the situation. And so I think folks are trying to present themselves as, you know, better flavors of a menu item. I think people are understanding now we just needed an entirely new menu because the menu hasn't worked. So give me your top one, two, three issues that you would really want to focus on if you were elected governor. Is it just that government and transparency stuff that you were talking about, or are there other issues that you would really want to focus on coming into office? Well, we have a very good track record of making decisions what's best for the people we represent versus what's best politically. And so we have to have someone that's going to take the political risks as long as it's the right thing to do. I would say, again, as we're renewing and recovering, we have to make sure we do that, not forgetting anyone. And that is from the farmer uh, in the North Country or the black trans woman uh, from Brooklyn, New York. And we have the ability to do that. Uh, but if I had to pick a few, you know, the things we've been working on for so many years from housing insecurity, uh, whether tenants uh, who need, who can be homeless in just a few weeks, or homeowners, uh, small one or two family homeowners who are facing foreclosure themselves. Public safety is a huge one. We see gun violence um, burgeoning in cities across the state and, and across the country. Uh, the access to mental health and health is tremendous. Climate change, education, and uh, transportation are huge issues all across the state. 
And what we've learned is that many of these issues are very similar. They've tried to force this upstate downstate divide. And, and when we ran last time, we, we realized that all of us combined and united can really address all of these concerns uh, in, a, in a very good way if we have someone who's uh, about erasing that divide and really using Albany for the benefit of all New Yorkers. So when you talk about cleaning up Albany, are we just talking about the governor's office or are we talking about the legislature as well? Obviously, we've seen plenty of corruption there. I'm wondering how you feel about that. There are a lot of issues uh, with Albany. What it stems from is you know, the problems we've seen nationally. Incumbency protection is usually the main thing that drives decision making in politics. And we have to elect people that, one, understand that their seat is not more important than the people they represent. And that doesn't mean that you don't want to get reelected. That doesn't mean that you don't want to go to higher offices. Of course you do. But the main goal can't be that. And what we've seen all across politics, including Albany, are decisions being made of how we protect the person that's uh, in the seat already. That is the same thing we saw with Jay Jacobs when he when he jumped out. It's about the incumbency protection, not about what's best for the people of the state. That alone, getting someone in who has shown that they will take the risks, that they will stand up even if other people aren't because it's the right thing to do, is a critical first step. You would think it's a simple thing, but it's not. And we've seen how it's played out time and time again, not just with Andrew Cuomo, but before him. Uh, people who are, as you mentioned, in other elected positions. And of course, there are people too often there uh, who enrich themselves. And I think we can do that by starting from the head, by starting from the top. Someone who hasn't come up through the system that way, learning that way, but has actually said, you, you know, we have to call out the system. And hopefully that's beneficial to someone like me politically, but more important, um, it's beneficial to the people of the state of New York. All right, well, we will see how this all shakes out. Jamani Williams, a potential candidate for New York governor next year and the New York City public advocate, thank you so much. Thanks for having me and look forward to another discussion.